Because yeah, this is where God lives. God lives right here. Yeah, it's all about God. It's all about God's work. If you're trying to tell me and bring this on to you as another person yes. that this is from the Bible, which I will not buy this. Okay. I think that you know, I know it's the Bible. I believe in God, but I'm not going to believe that God allowed these people to come here and kill innocent people. Not by no means of support of my life am I going to sit here and take it. Okay. And if but, I had a bomb, I'll tell God, okay. excuse me, Lord, but it's my time. Okay, but what about this? Thank you. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall you know it uh, you see moreover the light of the i am a christian and i know i shouldn't want you mad but i am mad i'm pissed. you're angry i'm mad no, 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 you're hurt or you're angry i'm hurt angry bitter you name it i got it okay. anger is one of the poisons that we are told to destroy out of us. yeah well we can't destroy it because they destroyed us okay. just make sure you don't go to war oh i want to go to war that's what i mean well then war is the right way well, we're having Right there, this, just drop it. We're getting a woman president. From the Jewish side of the tree of life is coming the Messiah. And it's a woman and a man joined together in balance. And they're going to bring righteousness to the earth. How many pages do we have to How many pages? Uh, 22 chapters. 22 chapters just because there are 22 letters. I'm going by what's his name, that fortune teller in the book. I would bring that to Stop it. It's time the president gets off his ass. I made an American one time. I was saying goodbye to him. He says, I guess, oh no, it's never goodbye. And he goes, tell me, I have said that I'll be in the United States. And I look at him. He says, look at the camera. Will. The terrorist is the first one to go. Now I got a choice. I'm not going to do your door. You're going to do your door. I'm blowing right, you back. Have a card? I got a choice. Do you understand what I'm going to do? It is a study in the dimensions of a thing called the tree of life and the divine mother, the female side of God, is now revealing all of her mysteries and she's beginning to bring forth all of the things that were hidden in the world. And we're out of the argument. We're over here because over here is just where we're having conversations between those of us who want to see into a mystery. And uh, you know that we're observing the High Holy Days. You know, this is Rosh Hashanah. Did you know about that? And Yom Kippur. Rosh Hashanah is the blowing of the trumpet in the new moon. And that's what we began Tuesday night. And now we're experiencing what are known as the 10 days of awe that lead to the day of the day of atonement. The 10 days are given to us by God so that we can spend some time in meditation understanding what these ten parts of the tree of life are all about so that when the day of atonement comes that we can have a right frame of mind and then ask God to forgive us for all the things that we've been doing so that when the judgment comes upon America it doesn't come upon us because it's getting ready to come and we no, it's getting ready to come because we have come to the end of the age and the fullness of time. We've come to where the dragon is appearing. See the continent of Europe? And you see that Europe is a great big dragon with its mouth wide open? See Italy is the tongue sticking out of the dragon's open mouth? And Europe is the hand. Scandinavia is the right limb. Asia Minor is the left limb. And all of Asia is the body and the tail of this great dragon. Can you see it? You see the dragon? You see that China is the tail of the dragon? You see, this is Europe. And Europe is a dragon with its mouth wide open. 
and Italy is the tongue sticking out of the dragon's open mouth. And his is right arm, Scandinavia. And the left arm is Asia Minor. And the tail of the dragon is China and the Orient. And the prophets told us that when the dragon shook its tail, then the end of the world will come. And of course, the wars that are getting ready to unfold between America and China. But even before that, God is now inviting all the American armies to come in and meet him in battle right here in the heart of the dragon. Pardon me? Yeah, this is just a cartoon. And this is a computer enhanced. I just see the same. Yeah. yeah. And so the book of Isaiah tells us that in that day, God will bring a judgment on the dragon, which means God will rise up out of the east and bring a judgment against the entire Western world. And that's why and that's why the book says, cast in the sickle, for the harvest of the earth is ripe, for the wickedness is full. So we've come to we've come to a day of battle and war. And this is why you must keep your brothers and your boyfriends and all of these young men in your life out of the army. Too late. Well, then write them and tell them to come home. He's already there. In Europe? Well, tell them not to kill. Tell them to be killed like Jesus and not to kill. And then he will find his life in heaven. But you see, there's going to be a lot of servicemen who will, are going to... I was in the world when that happened, too. You were? Wow. You were there? Yeah, I was there. Wow. You are a, uh, like a walking stroke of lightning. Yeah, I got another life. Yes. That's awesome. So make sure you don't throw it away from the wars that God is getting ready to bring upon America. Who's in the army, brother? Okay. And you are a young lady. And as a young lady, you have power with God. See, women have power. They can change the direction of the world through their prayers, through their, their heart, connection to God. You start asking God to do a favor with your brother. Uh, give him a broken leg. Let him get shot up in his leg so he comes home. Sure, that's better than dying, isn't it? His whole life is based on um, being athletic. Well, what's that got to do with being violent? I don't believe in violence, but he believes in uh, protecting his country. We don't have a country. We're on our way to heaven. We can't fight for something that doesn't belong to us. This country is stolen. From? Indians, from Native Americans. It was built upon uh, uh, the backs of slaves. Europeans. Sure. So now I'm, I'm repenting. I'm telling God that I'm sorry for the things, and that I will have nothing to do with it, and I will have nothing to do with protecting it when God is trying to give it back to those who own it. They are trying to give it to protect what they have stolen. That's why the scripture says that when this judgment comes against the rich, that they will weep and howl because of the things that are coming upon them. It's coming is the end of this age. So, if your brother is not going to deliver himself, make sure you do. I'm not killing my brother. <laughs> no, don't kill anyone. And stay out of the army yourself. Uh, it all has a Christian side to it, but it also has a Jewish side to it. And then when we understand the meaning of this symbol, we see that to be a true Christian is also to be a true Buddhist. You see that woman over there, that Buddhist nun? She's striking the drum beat. What she's doing is she's invoking the consciousness of God, bringing God's mind and heart down to us to center us. She's a true Christian, even though she's a Buddhist. And to be a true Jew is to be a true Muslim. It's only one true religion, and that's the one God is creating. And we're all coming from our own tradition. And when we come to the birth of the coming age, We'll find out that we all got there. Some of us as Jews, some as Christians, some as Buddhists, some as Muslims. But we'll all be there and we'll see 
there's only one. No. And so all the religions of the earth find their meaning in the dimensions of this ancient symbol that God put in the Garden of Eden. You have access to it. You don't get to see the dragon. You get to see, see the continent of Europe. Can you see that Europe is a great, big, tremendous, immense dragon with its mouth wide open? You see Italy is the tongue sticking out of the dragon's mouth. Europe is the head. Scandinavia is the right limb. Asia Minor is the left limb. And all of Asia is the body and the tail. It's great dragon. You see where the American armies are being drawn? Right into the mouth of the dragon and into the heart. To be destroyed by God in the age ending wars. That's why we must walk in perfect peace and perfect nonviolence so that we can be here as the new age is born. This age comes to its conclusion. See you at the wedding. If you think it's feasible, go for it. I mean, I'm not. I wouldn't add the plank. Go to the bathroom or something. Okay. things are just
America, America, killer bees, flesh eating disease, cancer, and God's blessing. See if you can spot the odd one out. Earthquakes, floods, droughts, and hands of AIDS. No, but this is like our street. you're going to miss out on everything that's coming down here. And you're going to miss out on maybe fulfilling your destiny, which is uh, uh, offering a sacrifice as a Christ-conscious person. So um, uh, whatever you do is right, because you're a child of light, you're a child of God. You just listen to the spirit within you. And it, some people have good reasons not to want to be involved in all the turmoil. Um, but eventually, you know, I mean, Either we lay down our life now in these events, or at least have part in these events, even if our life is not required of us. But if we try to hide somewhere, we might then look back after it's all over and say, I, I ran, I should have stayed, I should have stayed. Uh, sure. Oh yeah, so uh, Tim's wife, uh, her family, Maya, uh, her family lives in France. Uh-huh, okay. And uh, we've met a lot of people uh, that uh, are from uh, France, right? Uh -huh. I mean, I've been meeting a lot of people that are coming. Uh, even uh, were you in France? It was in Italy. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, so there's no basically. This, no escaping. Well, you know what? George Bush said we can't hide. Yeah. He said we can run, but we can't hide. <laughs> so. So. Uh, but if you have. Uh, Loved one over there, some place, some reason to go, by all means. <laughs> Just um, make sure that you, you don't hide yourself from the events because they're going to have such an effect on your life for the eternal rest of the, uh, uh, your eternal life. Yeah, I, I guess it is kind of difficult to escape certain things, but yeah. of course we all are kind of, we're scared. We're scared. Sure, we're frightened. Yeah. Sure. That's why we have to be together. Yeah. You see, one rod by itself is easy to break. Mm -hmm. Twelve rods together, you can't break. Yeah. So that's why we have to. We're all like rods in uh, Aaron's uh, height. <laughs> Good. Uh, yesterday uh, it rained, right. so I didn't come out in the rain, and I also I lost my voice yesterday. <laughs> so, uh, so will you be back tomorrow? Yeah, I hope so. Uh -huh. And uh, look at listen, look at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. So shall we come back tomorrow?
You two are friends together? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Love you. I'll see you at the table. Yes. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. How are you? Good. I'm going to get a drink of water. Oh, you're Christian? Yes. Oh, for the Jewish day, the, the celebrating the Harashana. Yes. The New Year. This month. Yes. But what I mean by as a Christian, I don't mean I'm a Christian. Okay. I mean, I understand now as I have matured in my faith that to be a true Christian means to be a true Jew, means to be a true Muslim, means to be a true Buddhist, means to be a true, a true Hindu. A true Hindu, absolutely. Because the entire. Say that again. What is that? Say that again. I said that as we mature in our faith, we discover that to be a true Christian means to be a true Jew. And to be that means to be a true Muslim. And it means to be a true Muslim means to be a true Buddhist, to be a true Hindu, and to be truly in touch with the teachings of indigenous American people means to be a true child of the earth, to be a child of the heavens and the earth. And once we had brought all of these elements of ourselves together in one, we begin to attain to the wholeness of God's revelation. Because that is what God is doing. God is bringing the true religion into existence. Some of us are coming as Christians, some as Hindus, some as Buddhists, some as Jews. But there's only one true religion, and that is the religion God is creating. And that is a religion of love. It is a religion of reverence. It is a religion of understanding and wisdom. And there is only one true race in the world, and that is the human race. And we're all coming to that state of consciousness through our own experiences, from all the various directions of human consciousness. So, you know, African, Asian, indigenous American, European. And as we begin to find the center, we'll begin to see what the true religion is. And that's what God is doing, revealing the center to us now. And the center is where we come out of the confusions of our time, come out of the illusions, come out of our entanglement in this political order, forsake it, come right out of it. And then as we come out, we come to the center, and this is where we find the truth. The truth is where the wisdom of God is coming to the middle to every single person who comes there. Because you have a piece of the puzzle that I cannot have unless I reverence you and, and get you a piece. And you must have my peace, and we must have his peace, and everyone must have each other's peace. And once we adopt each other's peace as our own, then we will see the presence of God speaking from every single one of you. So that's what's happening. And we're all in it together, right? All in this thing. <laughs> Would you say Bush is the only These are all in Everyone, anyone who comes in the name of Christ, not obeying and walking in the precepts of Christ, is an antichrist. We are not allowed to make war as children of God. If anyone makes war, he is an antichrist. We are not allowed to kill. Whoever kills is an antichrist. We are not allowed to be capitalists. Whoever is a capitalist is an antichrist. It makes no difference how pious it is, what language he uses to define himself, what rhetoric. The scripture says, know every tree by its fruits. You either make the tree good or you make the tree evil. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit. So know every tree by its fruits. So it doesn't make a difference that they go to churches and they stand in the pulpits and they use a lot of religious and spiritual rhetoric. Just follow them out the door and see how they live. If they're involved in oppression, if they're involved in injustice, if they are sitting in the highest seats of the land, not um, being either among the poor or of the poor in spirit, it means that they are liars, that they, they are antichrists. And God said that the day of the Lord will not come until the antichrists are revealed. And here they are now going out to make war in the world in Jesus' name. And they don't realize that God it is that's inviting them to come up to meet him in battle. And of course, once you see the dragon, you can see what that means. And 
I've heard little bits of your rap and it's wandering around through the rest of this. Will you be giving a lecture while you're in New York? Uh, yeah, every thing? day here. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, I would, wherever I was invited to. And, uh, Are you at a university? Do, do you have a website? Oh, not at this time. Oh, Hi. Hi, Nabil. You have one of these, right? No, no. actually. Okay. Yeah. This is, you have access to a computer? Can you explain me why Christians don't have Christians, that's because they follow the scriptures literally instead of, they do not see into the esoteric import of their own scriptures. You see, all the scriptures of the world have exoteric levels that reveal themselves only to those who can see outer meanings. Christ, Christ, you see, the Christian authors didn't take the time to show how Christianity was born out of Vedic consciousness, out of Buddhist consciousness. But the first, the authors of the Christian first gospels were all Buddhists. They're all students of the Eastern tradition. So they just took it for granted that those whom the Divine Spirit made wise and awakened would understand that when we come to the end of the age, all of these awakened souls would begin to reincarnate into the earth. It would come at this particular time in history, helping God turn the wheel of God, turn the wheel of Genesis. Well, the mystery of the mystery of reincarnation is in this Christian scriptures. It's understood in the concept of Galilee the great wheel of the Gentiles. And so this great wheel is the wheel that defines Christianity, the mystery of Christianity, but we see that's also the wheel that defines the Buddhist consciousness. It's also the wheel that find, defines indigenous American consciousness. It's also the wheel that defines Hindu consciousness because it's all one true religion. And the reason Christians don't understand it First of all, they're suffering from shell shock. They're suffering from hundreds and hundreds of years of being told how to interpret the scripture by the Roman hierarchy that became the spokesman for Christianity. The Roman hierarchy decided that all other religions were of the devil and only Christianity was true. And because it's a misinterpretation of his Christian scriptures, because Christ said, I am the way. They forget that Christ is Vishnu, Christ is Buddha. So they think that just Jesus was born in a vacuum. So they say, okay, if Christianity is the only way, then all of the religions are false. And with that, they threw the baby out with the water and they reject all of the precepts of Eastern consciousness. But nevertheless, they're all hidden inside of the teachings of Christ. You have to take it in a way of culturally, like uh, there's a culture, for example, the, the Jewish culture and that at that time needed somebody to tell a message. That's why Jesus Christ was there. And I think it's the same thing that happened to all the cultures. The avatars like like uh, Moh uh, Mohammed was it? Sure. And, and, and all the ones. So they mani like Buddha, they manifest different, you know, like to the Hindu and everybody goes to a different, because culturally, those people were segregated one to another. So the humanity actually needed messages to every little cell. So, but now somewhere we're gonna get together somewhere. And everything is just actually the same. All religions are the same. There is only one religion. And God is bringing us to that realization. That's why only in America could the true spiritual revolution take place. It's here, at the western ends of the earth. What is Libra? Libra is a sign of the scales. Okay, justice? Justice. Balance. Righting everything that is out of harmony. So we've come to the western ends of the earth, and we see that the rich are ruling over the poor, the powerful over the weak. Everything is out of balance. We've come to Kali Yuga the ends of the age of Kali Yuga, where darkness, evil, in all of its manifestations is ruling the earth. And that's why God is raising up this whirlwind in the earth. That's why we're coming to a state of war, because Krishna, the eighth manifestation of Vishnu, which is the same as the Christ 
in the Christian story. Krishna is descending to destroy all the miscreants of the earth. Because at the end of each age, the divine manifests itself in the ways of warfare and destruction to bring cleansing to the earth. So you come, Krishna come to destroy evil. That's exactly right. You come to destroy evil. I have a question. Correct me, uh, me if I'm wrong. The Bible Revelation. Correct me if I'm wrong. That book, that book, the book of Revelation is symbolic, isn't it? It's all symbolic language. Symbolic language. Taken from the Old Testament and brought into the future. Okay. So, it's symbolically. Um, and it's hard to interpret the symbols. And now, I have, a question I have is about, I think it's in chapter 12. Yeah. Uh, the book of Revelation, I think it's chapter 12, if I'm not wrong. Yes. About the woman behind the sun. She's with cold the in crown the sun. With the, the crown, right, she's cold with the sun. Yes. And she has a crown of uh, believe, 12, stars. 12 stars. Yes. What is, uh, how you interpret that? Well, we go back to the book of Genesis. Right. Where it says, oh, sorry, and she also steps on the, on the, the dragon, moon. On, on the moon, and yeah. she step on the, the serpent. Okay. Okay. How do you interpret that? That's yeah. the symbolic thing. When we go back to the book of Genesis, yeah. we find the scripture saying, "Let us create man in our image." Yeah. Well, who is us? Yeah, that's a good us question. Us is the father and the mother. God is not just father. God is not just Brahma. God is Brahma and Saraswati. God is male and female. And that's why we are created male and female because we are in their image. We are children of the divine mother and father. But they are one. Now, when the Judeo-Christian religion came to power, divine wisdom herself realized that she had to Reveal to the world what evil looked like. See, she's wisdom. She's the Holy Spirit. She is authoring the scriptures. She is hiding her mysteries. She is the one who taught us about the tree of life. And now she's going to hide herself in the garments of her own created order so that we can see what a world out of balance looks like. Because if we did not see evil in all of its glory, then we would still have it in us. And we could not inherit the age to come and the world to come because all this evil would still be latent within our own consciousness. So the Divine Mother has allowed the, instrument, uh, the, the elements of imbalance to rule the earth. So 2,000 years ago, just as the sun rises in the east every morning, and sets in the West every evening. So this age began at the time of Passover, at the time of John the Baptist, and we have now come the seven great epic days of Passover to where the sun is setting in all of the events of our time, in the midst of all of the unfolding realities. Now, we're now observing the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, which is the blowing of the trumpet in the new moon. The moon is a symbol of the feminine principle. The sun is a symbol of the male principle. When the sun rose upon the earth 2,000 years ago, the male principle came to power. When it did, the moon went into occultation, just as the moon goes out every morning. Well, that was the Divine Mother, and she is now hiding in the garments of her own creation until now. So now when we read in Revelation, I beheld a wonder. A woman clothed in the sun, and she has the moon underneath her feet, and she is crowned with a crown of 12 stars. Well, she is God. She's God. She is God. God is not just Father. God is Father and Mother. And the Father is the sign of the Lamb. Now, what she's doing is she is descending to us. She is crowned in the majesty of the universe itself because she is the creator. 
And she is now bringing she's creator. She's the co-creator. Between the two of them, they created the universe. She's God. She's God. She's God herself. She's God herself. That's exactly right. It's not, but she's it's been, not two. But she's, it's, it's one. There's only one, but they are one. The are, father and the mother are one. They're one in the spirit. Yes, that's in why. That's why this symbol, this symbol of yeah. Keta, the supreme crown, is the symbol of the top. Right. Where you the male that. and the female. Yeah, just are, like, like when Jesus Christ saying the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit is one. The Holy but Spirit. The, the, the Spirit in, in one, but I mean in the, yes. in the Spirit. Yes. Yes, but we're not to get entangled in literal interpretation right, right. because it's all metaphorical and it all reveals itself only to the mind that is coming to that state of consciousness right. that understands that the Holy Spirit of God is not a male thing. Not the Holy enough. Spirit of God is the feminine side. The feminine side. Yes. And that feminine side is now coming and revealing her mysteries. She's bringing forth a child. That child is a higher state of consciousness that is being born right here in the western ends of the earth. And here we are. This place number seven is the end of the age. We're at the lotus feet of Vishnu. This is where it all began. So at the feet of the mystery is this awakening happening. We've come to the end of the age and we're all experiencing this shift in consciousness because from the feminine side of the tree of life is coming this balance, is coming this restoration. So in order for this to be born, this is the new age, this age has to come to its conclusion. That's why in Revelation 12 says, and then I saw another one, that a great dragon. Right. And the dragon stood before the woman to devour her child. Right. Okay, take a look at the continent of Europe. You see that Europe is a great big dragon with its mouth wide open? You see Italy is the tongue sticking out of the dragon's wide open mouth. Europe is the head of this great creature. Scandinavia is the right arm. Asia Minor is the left arm. And all of Asia is the body and the tail of this great immense Leviathan. Can you see the dragon? Yeah, with Italy, with the See his tongue sticking? That's his yeah, tongue. That's his tongue. And there's a volcano right there. Right. Because this dragon breeds fire. And the mouth is wide open. So the prophets told us that when we came to the end of the age, when the Divine Mother, who is creation herself, began to bring forth her next child, that she would begin to release her mysteries. And that's why it says that the dragon comes up from the sea. The sea is a symbol of the consciousness of the planet itself. It has always been there, but it, we haven't been able to see it until it's time to see it. Now that we see it, we can interpret the unfolding realities of our time. You look in the mouth of the dragon, there's Bosnia, Serbia, Croatia. Make sure you don't let your brothers or your children or anyone get caught up in the wars that God is now bringing to pass upon the earth. Because if we follow George Bush and all of these antichrists, they will take our children and bring them right into the mouth of the dragon to be devoured in the wars that God is igniting in the earth. Right there, in the heart of the dragon is Afghanistan. God is bringing all the armies of the Western world up to meet him, and he's going to surround them and destroy them. China, Russia, all of these nations will surround this, see, all out of the east is coming the judgment of God. And that's why the prophet Isaiah said that in that day, right here, in that day, the Lord with his saw and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, the crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Now these are the judgment wars that are beginning to come against the Western world. And those wars began last Tuesday morning when this happened. And there shall be upon every high mountain, which means every great nation, and upon every high hill, rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. And moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, 
and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that God binds up the breach of his people and heals the stroke of our womb. See, now all of us in our different religious traditions are divided one from each other. Christian from Jew and Christian and Jew from Muslim, Muslim from Buddhist. But God is now using the events in the Western world to shake us together and bring us into a realization that Kali Yuga is ending. A whole new age is in the process of being born. And bringing us into the realization that there is only one true religion, and that's the religion that God has created. And we are all coming from our separate traditions to this climax of human history, to the vortex of history, where this age will collapse and a whole new age will come into a game. And we are all coming from our separate traditions to this climax of human history, to the vortex of history, where this age will collapse and a whole new age will come into existence. Just as every child is born out of the darkness of its own mother's womb, we are being born out of the darkness of this age into the light of the coming age. And that's why we want to make sure that we do not resist the flow of life. Do not resist what's unfolding in the world because if we fight against it, you know, you know, that's why the conservative mind is a very sick mind because it's trying to protect, it's trying to stop time, it's trying to keep reality from unfolding. They're trying to protect what they've stolen and what doesn't belong to them. They don't realize that's what the Buddha taught. See, the Buddha taught all misery comes from clinging to fixed forms. The time is moving, everything is changing. God is a God of transformation. Everything is in a state of transformation. If you try to cling to fixed forms, you will bring sorrow and eventually destruction by yourself. So what we have to do is just simply be in harmony with the unfolding of divine reality and we'll be get swept right through the vortex into eternity. Because it means we're not fighting against God. We're at one moment. We must resist this system. That's what, that's what strengthens us. But we must, must not fight against God. And we have to know the difference. The darkness we can resist, but not. Which one is the true religion? There is only one. Some of us are coming as Jews, some as Christians, some as Buddhists, some as Muslims, some as Hindus, some as all other traditions. And we are moving towards that moment where the true religion will be manifest. And it's the religion of love. It's the religion of wisdom, understanding, and love. It's a religion that is being born out of the chaos of our time. Out of chaos comes order. Out of darkness comes light. Out of Judaism, Christianity, Muslim, Hinduism, Buddhism, it's coming from the true religion. When the Jews become Messiah, then the Messiah is going to teach us that to be a true Jew is to be a true Christian. To be a true Christian is to be a true Buddhist. To be a true Muslim. That's not confusing. It's not confusing. We're confused now. We'll be confused then. Must have values. No must have Yes. He predicted that if this happened and then there will be a new religion, it will be fit. Is that the one you're talking about? Well, all the religions have been had. Mayans, Native Americans, uh, Eastern uh, Buddhists, all know that we are approaching that moment. Nirvana. Every religion knows it because God has spoke to every religious tradition. And in the mystery of Christ, all things come together. You see, we all come to a state of Christ consciousness, which it means is the conscious understanding of the presence of God. So he was not so perfect after all. Who, Christ? <laughs> He's in us. <laughs> and yes. So he, he was not so perfect after all. <laughs> well. All right. Well, if I'm thinking about Eventually Christ in shows, myself, shows in the world. how long did he study in, in India? That's so perfect. Christ? Yeah. 2,000 years, we're still there. We're still doing it. Yeah. But like, you know, when after, before he got baptized, he, was, he went to India to study? Yeah. And that, that's part of the historical mystery. Okay. It means that the adepts in the mystery of Christ went into India to perfect their own teachings. Because in reality, 
Jesus is the universal manifestation of God's presence, not only to humanity, but in humanity. And Christ is alive in every generation. Christ has been crucified throughout all time. Every Christ is born in every day. I mean every birth. He dies in every day. Christ is alive in the sum of all unfolding reality. Jesus is the, is the premier, supreme, archetypal reality. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The mystery of Christ is understood in the mystery of the tree of life. And this is what John the Baptist taught, was this universal mystery the unfolding of historical reality. The Apostle Paul taught the same mystery. We, here at the ends of the earth, must be receivers of that mystery so we can learn to interpret the things that are happening. Learn to see that the Lord flew into the World Trade Center Tuesday morning. Because the God, God manifests himself in every visible form in the form of the children of light, but also in the form of the children of darkness. And only if we have the mind of Christ can we understand that. So it's you're, a, saying, you're saying God uh, uh, made this thing possible? God is responsible. Question. There's only one God. Yeah, God's responsible for all evil. Yeah. God created the evil, God created the yeah, good, and commands us to choose the good. And because in America we have not chose the good, God is now using wickedness to destroy the evil of the American way of life. The United States is the most wicked nation that has ever existed on the face of the planet. Not because it does things more wicked than other nations, it's because it does it in the name of God. The United States is founded in genocide. It's founded in slavery. It's built upon the backs of oppressed working people. All in God's name. How old is America? 240 years, 230 years. So why the, the, are those predictions in the Bible? Yes, of course. Where? where? Well, because the United States is um, this great mystery Babylon. Just as the Jews were led into Babylon in ancient times, or the children of Europe were led into America in the same way, because this is modern Babylon. And that's why the prophets ground. The last book of the old of the New Testament says, And after these things I heard another angel come down with he from heaven with great power, and his earth was lighted with his glory. And this angel is the angel of divine presence, the Metatron, to whom Moses said that we must fear, we must not blaspheme the name of God, because God's name is in the angel of divine presence, the Metatron. And that angel just flew into the World Trade Center Tuesday morning. And he cried mightily, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen. That's America. It has become the habitation of devils. For all the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The merchants of the earth are racks, racks rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice in heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath not remembered her iniquity. God has not forgotten the very first longhouse and teepee that was torched by the colonists to create the earth. Not forgotten. Not forgotten. The very first person who walked on on the east coast of this country in shackles, just enslaved, to be enslaved for the next 200 years. This is uh, called the King James version. It's the it's the version. Of, yes. Well, that's why it says, therefore reward her even as she has rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fit to her devil, and therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. It says in the scripture that we must not ignite any fire on the Sabbath day. The American leaders are igniting the rest of Can you tell me about that city, ancient city, that I tell you about? 
Yes. They don't, they don't, you don't see this. You see the dragon? Okay, you can see the dragon. Can you see the dragon? See the continent of Europe? You see that the continent of Europe is a great, big, immense, tremendous dragon with its mouth wide. See? Italy is the tongue sticking out of this dragon's wide open mouth. Europe is its head. Scandinavia is the right leg. Asia Minor is the left limb. And all of Asia is the body and the tail of this great immense dragon. And the prophets told us that when we came to the end of the age, when the Divine Mother began to reveal herself again, she would begin to reveal all of her mysteries, because she is the goddess of the earth. She is the creator. And she and the Father are one. And she is here in the western ends of the earth bringing forth her children. And the Father is rising up in the east, getting ready to bring a judgment against the western world. And that's why it says here, once you can see the dragon, you can understand this. In that day, the Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, the crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. The very next chapter says, Woe to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim. This is the Zionist movement out of Central Europe in the early parts of this century. And because the very next chapter says, Woe to Aria, the city where David dwelt. I will distress Aria, and there shall be heaviness and sorrow. I will camp against thee round about. I will lay siege against thee. And thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise. Well, this is Jerusalem. But this city is not the city of Jerusalem in Palestine. It's the city of Jerusalem in the center of Europe. It's this ancient Jewish city that is hiding under present day Vienna, Austria. The ruins of this city exist under present day Vienna. And that's why when the world wars began, when the United States declared war on Central Europe in 1917, this was the king of Babylon not realizing that he was declaring war on Jerusalem at the time of the First World War. But not only that, at the turn of the century, the Zionist movement out of Europe began as a result of the work of Theodor Herzl, who was a Jewish uh, reporter, a, a philosopher, an author. In Vienna, Austria, Theodor Herzl wrote a book called The Juden Stop. And through his book, he incited the move, the Zionist movement at the beginning of this century out of Central Europe back to Palestine, where the Jewish people believed that the city of David was. And the reason that they believed that is because they rejected the mystery that arose upon the earth 2,000 years ago the mystery of the tree of life and the fact that there was hiding in the center of this mystery this ancient city that was built 1,000 years before the time of Christ at the time of David now what happened is is that when Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt it says they took a three-day journey and came into the wilderness well Moses and the children of Israel came to that place which we now call Jerusalem. And it was there that Moses built a city out of stones. And he called it Jerusalem. But then he told the children of Israel, don't ever mistake this for the true Jerusalem, just as you must not mistake the written law for the true law. Because these are just images in stone of the true Jerusalem that will unfold over the cross of history. So with that, the children of Israel then came up into the land of Canaan. Well, they didn't go into Palestine, they left Palestine and they came up into Europe under the name of Dan. Dan was one of, Dan was the fifth tribe of Israel. And what they were doing is they were coming up at the time, well, this number five on the tree of life, 
They were coming up at that time into Central Europe. And when you look into ancient history, you see the name Dan everywhere in Europe. The Greeks were called the Danes. They were involved in the Trojan War. In Ireland, at the time of the exodus out of Egypt, all of a sudden the people appear in Ireland and they're called the Tuatha Dé Dan, the Tuatha Dan. These are the children of Dan. These are the children of Israel. All throughout Europe, you have the name Dan, the Danube River, Dan Mark. Dan is the name of the ancient presence of Israel in Europe. And it was during that time that the children of Israel built the city of David in Central Europe. That's why World War I began there in Vienna. That's why Hitler marched into Vienna, Austria in 1938 to begin the judgment wars of the Second World War because Vienna is the center of this mystery.